Namaste. Dearest <laughs> Guru Guruji, as you said, man realizing that external search has reached its limits must look within to see the God within his being. This phenomenon, the spiritual path, seems to be spreading all over the world and coincides with prophecy. Such prophetic oracles as the Bible, the Pyramid Prophecies, Edgar Cayce, etc., these same prophetic oracles talk about the Holocaust and changes, such as the shift of the Earth's axis, polar caps melting, etc. My question is, was it not just an arbitrary moment when you began the BMS and the MS? How do you see the role of IFSU and meditation in the scheme of the situation outlined by prophecy? And any insights that you may see as to the purpose of these changes in mankind's evolution? Beautiful question. What, what is your definition of Holocaust? Um, cataclysmic changes in the role of mankind. Good time. Now, this is very true. I have said in some lectures somewhere at some time that towards the turn of the century, the world is, le is being led to a gigantic catastrophe because man's mind is developing at such a fast rate. The growth of the intellect has been so much more faster in the past 200 years than it had been in the previous 1800 years. But with the development of the intellect, the development of the heart has not taken place. In other words, all the scriptures that had taught of the opening up of the heart and of love has just remained mere words in people's minds and never ever put into practice. Now I've been saying this for many many years now, even before IFSU started, that the world is heading for this major catastrophe. This catastrophe will be on such a level that it will affect the entire solar system. Affecting the entire solar system, it will affect the entire galaxy. Affecting this galaxy, the vibrational effect which it would create will affect other galaxies and there would be a great disturbance of universal proportions. And that will start from this little speck of dust called Earth. Hmm? Now, just very recently, about two years ago, I was pointed, it was pointed out to me a cutting from a newspaper where a twice Nobel Prize winner, Linus Pauling, through his studies in science, seems to think the same thing that we are heading at the turn of the century towards a major catastrophe. Now, that is the tendency to which the world is heading. But this tendency, as all tendencies, can be averted. Man cannot stop the technological progress that is being made. Man cannot stop the intellectual development that is taking place, but man can add the quality of the heart to that intellectual and technological development whereby all new inventions could be used in a constructive manner and not a destructive manner. And that is why, that is the reason why Ifsu has taken birth to bring this message of love and not only message in words. Many teachers have done that in the past but the message with the understanding 
of the message, also the techniques, how to develop that heart. So here is theory and practice, whereby this could be achieved. Now, there are many inventions that people have not heard of yet, and which I, as a fact, know to exist, which could blow up this entire planet within a matter of seconds. The latest you might have heard of is the neuron bomb, hmm? where people could be killed but building will, buildings will be preserved. But there are other very, very dangerous inventions that are existing at this present moment. What you know to be the Cold War hmm? is a Cold War for a purpose. And many heads of states are aware of this catastrophe. Hmm? So, instead of being aggressive, they are just playing around and delaying time. Now, all this can be averted if man's heart is opened up in love so that these instruments could be used in a constructive manner and not a destructive manner. Hmm? Now, the world's governments, there is an organization that is suppressing information about UFOs, for example. They tell you it's a myth, it's a fallacy. It is the truth <coughs> that there are other beings and other planetary existences which are trying to contact us, which are trying their best to negotiate that this catastrophe should not happen because it will affect them as well. Hmm? Now, although there are existences of a higher nature, there are also existences of a lower nature. Hmm? The existences of the lower nature elsewhere in, in this galaxy would want to promote this destruction. Hmm? The existences of a higher nature is trying their best to communicate the futility, hmm? but their communication is not received and when anyone reports seeing some object they are either regarded as a madman hmm? or someone just extending their imagination. But this is not so. There are contacts being made but the world has got together especially in some organizations which include the leaders of states to suppress the information for one reason and the reason is this that they do not want to create create a panic in the world if tomorrow the world's headlines blare out that we are to be invaded hmm, there will be chaos there would be panic and to avoid this panic hmm, all this information has been suppressed Good. It's like you go into a cinema. Now, a fire might be raging behind the screen or at the side of the cinema, but the manager will get up on stage and make announcements that everything is okay, under control, do not rush, go to the exits, there's no harm, and everything is fine. Meanwhile, there is chaos there hmm? and a lot of people could be harmed but more people could be harmed if they try to rush the exits hmm? so it is the same simple psychology that is used hmm? now when you talk of prophetic visions or the prophecies 
that we have read of in the scriptures, they are true. Because past, present and future is here and now. These stories of time machines we could go forward in time or backward in time, they are true too, but not in the form of a machine. You can go forwards and backwards in time through your own mind because as I've said on this course many times that the mind contains the entire universe and it is a very simple matter to be able to extend one's mind to a future time where these things can be seen and it is a very easy matter to extend one's mind backwards into previous lifetimes. It's the same process. It's the same motor car. You could put it in forward gear or you could put it in reverse gear. Now yogis, true yogis, true gurus have the ability to do this and they see this so, so clearly. And that is why they work night and day to prevent this. Hmm? For example, take myself. I sleep two hours a day and 22 hours I spend in activity. Here on this very tiring tour of four months including India, America, uh, England, Spain and all over, I seem to need more rest at the moment because the body does get flagged down a bit. But normally my routine is sleeping two hours a day and being active for 22 hours. So, the method, the best method found and not only by me, I have had it verified by the greatest gurus that are existing today, not only in the physical form, but also in a subtler physical form. Hmm? that have verified this. Many people that have started movements have started, have got the idea, who have heard of the idea and misusing the knowledge or the power they wish to gain and thereby misuse this knowledge or perhaps not know how to use this knowledge. So that is why myself traveling night and day from here to there, sleeping in one bed tonight and another bed tomorrow night, living out of a suitcase, eating foods that I'm not used to eating. There are certain special preparations to the kinds of food I eat for example. The person that cooks for me in South Africa spends eight hours a day in prayers. Hmm? Yes. And she even has her little lamp lit on the stove. And as she is cooking, there's nothing but prayers in her, in her heart all the time. Because the system has become so sensitive hmm? to certain kinds of vibrations. But the job has to be done. Hmm? It has to be done. And all I ask of the meditators is to promote the word of love and peace. Hmm? Now, as far as prophecies are concerned, a prophecy is something that tells you of the tendency that could happen in the future. But it does not mean that one must take it literally. <coughs> you know the tendency and you can alter the tendency. Hmm? Do you find while you're driving your car that going in a certain direction if there's a pile up or an accident is imminent you can make a detour. Hmm? Although the first tendency was to proceed on Highway 101. Hmm? But you can make a detour. You can have a bypass. Hmm? Good. So, these prophetic visions of these great seers mean nothing else 
but there's a tendency that is imminent and man today through meditation through the development of the heart could use the same knowledge more constructively and it could become a better world now I do not believe in an age of enlightenment that is a fallacy hmm? since we know of recorded history hmm? since we know the time of Christ for example is man any better today hmm? he has the same faults and frailties and weaknesses and perhaps through technological progress those faults and frailties have become even more exaggerated hmm? so man is no better but what is possible is that individually man can develop to a stage where his heart could be opened hmm? now a certain percentage of people whose hearts are really opened can create a certain vibrational effect in the atmosphere like I said sometime I don't know when that if you walk into a room where people are all gloomy and just one person comes in and changes the whole vibration and makes the whole atmosphere cheerful <coughs> but then let this not be a carrot that is dangled in front of people hmm? because what is the dropout rate hmm? consider that for example in our movement we have found that out of a, a hundred people initiated there might be perhaps 15 to 20 percent people that have not been doing their practices properly or that have not been given the proper understanding of the practices and have ceased perhaps to do the practices but 80 percent is there hmm? now there are claims made by various people that if you have a certain percentage that would do meditation then the entire atmosphere could be changed now the premise is true but are they really meditating and is that meditation proper for them is it a generalized thing or is it a particularized thing that is tailor-made for the person and what maximum benefit has the person gained the proof of the pudding lies in the eating hmm? and the pudding could be so so beautiful but if it does not taste nice it is totally worthless hmm? so a person could go out on a wonderful sales campaign hmm? and present all kind of pseudo scientific charts and things which are not helping the world any whatsoever false promises false promises false promises hmm? commercially orientated hmm? and then therefore the promises become more and more false because of the commercial orientation hmm? our organization is totally different there is no commercial orientation at all hmm? I was told a story by a person I know so well hmm? that there was a lady in the queue that wanted to get initiated or wanted to start some spiritual practice in some organization and she was flatly refused said sorry we can't initiate you unless you bring the 190 200 odd dollars or whatever the case might be we can't initiate you and the woman was turned away in tears now is that helping the world hmm? they're only helping themselves 
not spiritually, that's for sure. <coughs> this way. So, as far as the prophecies are concerned, they are very true, but prophecies show a tendency, and that tendency can be altered. And what we ask of all meditators is this, do your practices and try and speak about it to your friends, all the benefits you have gained, introduce them to the concept of love and brotherhood. Hmm? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm? Know, know thyself. These simple scriptural, scriptural injunctions, they are so simple. So simple to understand perhaps or so simple to conceive of. What we want to do is not only the conceptual side of it, but we want it to be put into daily practice. It could be done so simply. Therefore these ways and means have been devised where the, the entire personality of a being or a person is taken into consideration and if he is in standard 4, he is led on to standard 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. Hmm? A person of standard 4, it would be no good to give him the lessons of standard 10. He would not grasp it. He would not conceive of it. Hmm? So therefore, everything should have a system, a method, and all things should be based upon love and truth. For that is all actually that really exists. And love and truth is God. Hmm? So, as we said in some talk, I think, that we want a living God, hmm? not an abstract God. Hmm? So that is the purpose. And the best way we found to operate the International Foundation for spiritual unfoldment is this, that every country opens up its own chapter, like the American Meditation Society. The head office wants nothing from the American Meditation Society, wants nothing at all from them, nothing at all. For example, the six dollars, five dollars or six dollars that is sent with the form, that just about barely and we've got the uh, certificates from CPAs, we call them chartered accountants in South Africa. Uh, this is the cost for the processing, stationery, filing, reference books, cross-references, secretarial work. It just about covers that. And most of the time, uh, it has to be, <laughs> it has to go out of the poor guru's pocket from his own little savings. Hmm? There's nothing left now anymore, actually. Hmm? Okay, but the job has to be done, and it has to be done. Fine. So, for example, all the contributions uh, that are made to the American Meditation Society is not for me as the guru, or, or, or if so. No, we don't see a penny of it. No, we don't. It is to be used here. It is to be used here for the purpose of building up a center, an ashram, a retreat place where any meditator could just go off for the weekend and there would be qualified teachers there to guide them, discuss their problems with them, qualified counselors, hmm? someone that's qualified to advise or else just a resting place away from all the problems and into an atmosphere of spirituality. Hmm? So that is why whatever could be contributed to the American Meditation Society should be done if possible. Hmm? No one is coerced and no one is compelled to do that. It is totally voluntary. Ours is not a commercial organization with certain set fees must be put. Hmm? A suggested donation is made, a suggestion is made, 
But if that suggestion, if that suggestion cannot be taken up, it does not matter at all. Hmm? And then, the, our principle is this, that every country must handle their affairs according to what is best for their country. Hmm? In some country, no donations are asked at all. Hmm? Nothing is asked. Just say, ask yourself, when you find any benefit, see what you can do hmm? for the movement, if you can, and if you want to. Hmm? So every country is left to their own. They have the, the president, they have the board of trustees, and I have great faith that what they would be doing would be good for the people at large, holding in mind the principle that this is not a commercial body, this is a body that teaches of love all the time and openness of heart, and they would act accordingly. And that is trust and faith I have. I, for example, have nothing to do even in the appointing of trustees. Hmm? I leave it to the national leaders to, to do that. Because I maintain that you people are on the spot. And you should know who's who. Hmm? I know them spiritually, yes, okay. Right. But you are here to know them very well physically. And their physical behavioral pattern. Hmm? So that is how it is done and within a period of just about two years you could say we have developed many many countries now hmm? and it's growing faster and faster and faster day by day through the grace of divinity. What do I do? I am nothing. I'm just a channel and I pray every day that let me be like that hollow piece of wood, hmm? the flute and let divinity blow its music through it hmm? so the world can enjoy and listen to that divine symphony divine symphony of love hmm? that's all so simple hmm? yeah. now when I do these stores um, they give me a purse uh, a purse uh, is a little percentage of what is charged on these causes. Give me a little percentage of that. And actually, um, I do have to buy bread. Hmm? Yes. And uh, if I could live on love and fresh air, which I can, hmm? I can. Hmm? I've gone through 30 and 40 days fasts without a glass of water when I did my ascetic practices in the Himalayas. But then I wouldn't be here, I would be in the Himalayas. But to be able to function in the world, hmm? lights and rents and things have to be paid. So, the little percentage that's given to me, you know, from these causes, uh, helps me to live until I make another tour. Hmm? So to earn a piece of bread again, which is necessary. And my needs are so simple. Hmm? I don't even have clothes, for example, until Gita made a few shirts for me. Hmm? See, that is, that is my life. A total dedication. A total dedication to the service of mankind. And would you believe me, many of you won't know this, that I have been a millionaire three times over. Hmm? A millionaire by birth. Hmm? And I chucked up the inheritance because it was illegal. Hmm? It came from a union which was not moral. So I would not accept. Hmm? Second million came by marriage, which is not mine. <laughs> yes. And I could still find half a dozen women millionaire, millionaires to marry me if I was that kind. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And the third time. <laughs> He's still enjoying the joke. <laughs> And this is true, it's no joke. That's the biggest joke. <laughs> yes. 
you know, the saying goes, the world loves a lover. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I go one step further. Hmm? So that all love loves love. Yes. Hmm? Good. That was the second time. The third time in business. Hmm? I made a million. I came to South Africa with ten shillings and tick in my pocket when I was just past in my middle twenties. Ten shillings and a ticket. Hmm? I made the millions which my partners have grabbed and uh, there is a case pending. don't know if I should pursue it. It look very stupid really to see headlines, Guru sues for money. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am negotiating so that things could work out without going into litigation, rather mitigation. I said, look, below, you know, I don't need this few million that's owed to me, just give me half of it, I'm okay. At least uh, these, you know, I don't need to worry about tomorrow's plate of food. Hmm? Good. Fine. So I came to South Africa with 10 shrinks in my pocket and I'm left. Uh, uh, ten shillings and three pennies. Now I'm left <laughs> minus the ten shillings. I've got about three pennies. <laughs> you see, you see, you see the whole purpose of life. I could go into business now. I have enough expertise in so many lines of businesses. Hmm? I've been a director of so many companies and things that I could go into business now and within a few years. Hmm? I'll be back where I was any time. Hmm? So, some might say, ah, oh, sacrifice. It's no sacrifice, it is my joy. Yes, it's an expression of the joy. I have found the communion that I required and sought for since childhood when I ran away at the age of four hmm? to try and find God. And kept running away again and again and again uh, to find him. Hmm? Like the musk deer. You know that story? Hmm? That was running here and there and everywhere and getting this fragrance. And it ran here, there, everywhere trying to find the source of the fragrance until it got so tired that it lied down in exhaustion total exhaustion and found that the musk was in its own navel. <laughs> yes. That's the musk deer. The, the musk comes from the navel of this deer. Hmm? Good. Yeah, that's what I found. Yes, that's what I found. And once having found that communion, I am the richest man on earth. Hmm? And that riches is expressed in the amount of joy and bliss I enjoy every moment of the day. Hmm? You see? So, that is the purpose of IFSU. And that is my role in IFSU. Hmm? To try and avert the tendencies. I am against no movement in the world at all. May there be more and more movements. Hmm? As long as something is moving, it's fine. Hmm? But let it move in the right direction. Hmm? Don't play or prey upon the gullibility of man hmm? with all kinds of carrots dangling. Hmm? You reach this state of consciousness and then another carrot is put forward, another state of consciousness. Then another carrot, another state of consciousness. Hmm? Carrots, carrots, carrots. In front of poor donkeys. See, it hurts me. I speak about these things because it hurts me. Hmm? I would never disparage anyone or say a word against anyone because they too, even in their folly, have divinity in them. And I see the divinity in everyone. Hmm? But let things be right, let things go right, let there be 
to the aim that is to be achieved in some form of upliftment. For if the unit is changed, society could be changed to a great extent because it is the unit that forms society. Hmm? Many reformers have come and gone. They try to reform society at large. It's an impossible task. You can't do it. Do it with the individual. Hmm? Like we said sometime that to produce a better world, uh, if the mother you know, becomes a better mother, hmm? then the, ch the children would be better. Hmm? If they are better, their children would be better. And that is how progress is made. That is how progress is made. Then you will find that in a in a organization, I don't seem to like the word movement too much, and neither organization. It is so stifling. It lacks that freedom. But for the want of a better word, we use the word organization. Hmm? But in an organization oriented with love and faith and devotion. The membership will always be 70% women. Yes. Those are the statistics so far. Hmm? Perhaps they have greater feeling. Perhaps they are more devotional. Perhaps they have that in them. Hmm? I don't know why they always classify divinity as a man. Hmm? It's always our father or he or... Hmm? Nothing wrong with that. Hmm? But it could be our mother too, you know. Hmm? For that, that divinity is actually neuter. It's neutral. It's neither male nor female. Hmm? But we say our father because the father is a protective figure, protects. Hmm? And when we say our mother, it is a figure of love. Hmm? You go to a mother to be comforted. You go to a father to be protected. Hmm? You see? Well, we haven't been really talking philosophy this morning, have we? It's just, just as practical issues. And uh, well, I always talk on the level of the question. If you ask a very deep philosophical question, then we could dive into those deep waters. If it's a practical thing, wanting to know things, I would talk on that level. So that is my role, that's the purpose of EFSU, that is the tendency of the world, and this tendency can be averted by the expansion of the heart. Thank you. Good. We have plenty of time. No, some more questions, please. Some questions here are rather long and long Mm-hmm. And then the person who asked this question, is it here that that made? Oh, uh, could it be read out? Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can cover that in 15 minutes, but it's 15 minutes? 11 45. Mm. Time flies so quickly, doesn't it? I didn't realize that I've spoken for 45 minutes now on such a simple thing. Can you see with your glasses on? <laughs> To the Brazilian bombshell. <laughs> She's lovely. This question is from Kathy Lewis. Mm -hmm. And he says, Is there And she says. Yes, that she says. <laughs> is there such a thing as divine will? And if there is, what it is the nature and how does it interact? human will. Mm. I, I have made many tapes on the subject. Um, we have to define what the human will is, which is normally termed free will. And we also have to define 
what we also have to define what divine will is. Good. Now, divine will is the tendency that you are born with. Hmm? Divine will sets upon you your capacity within a certain period of time which capacity can be gone beyond that you have the scope to transcend that capacity but because of the previous evolutionary process you have reached a stage where within a certain period of time within certain working out of sanskaras and because of karmic values you can progress so much in a certain period of time that is divine will good now in this progress that is mapped out for you it is mapped out for you not in detail it is mapped out for you generally as a tendency hmm? for example you want to go to New York hmm? you can go by airplane you can go by motor car and you can go by donkey cart hmm? if you want fine now divine will would say that your tendency is to go to New York but free will gives you the choice to decide what the vehicle you want to use hmm? airplane or the motor car that is free will now why has man been given this freedom hmm? if the if divine will is all powerful which it is hmm? why is man given this free will because man is not a mechanical man. The process of evolution, of progression, is not a science, but an art. In evolution, a person grows, expands. The very growing of the flower is an art. It is the art contained within the flower to grow. And when you plant the seed, you could never say in advance how many petals the flower will have. Hmm? That very seed, being subjected to all the natural forces, hmm, within the proper amounts, will grow in such a way to its maximum value. So it could have 20 petals and it could have 25 petals. Hmm? depending how much the seed attracts to itself from the environment. Hmm? Same thing with human life. Life is an art and not a science. It could be both because science means a system. We've got to put a system to life. Hmm? But within the system we put to life, now by system I mean discipline, within the discipline we put in life, there should be the art of living. Hmm? Life should be like poetry, hmm? which is set within a metrical system, but totally free for expression. Hmm? There lies the art. Hmm? So the meter of the poem is just the framework hmm? while the expression in the poem is totally free. So what do we do in life is find freedom within this bondage. Hmm? This bondage of this little body. The bondage of this little mind. And how do we find the freedom within this bondage is by expressing that inner spirit within us which is forever free. So, by expressing that inner spirit, by infusing the inner spirit into that which is disciplined or, or that which has a system, we find 
a greater and greater freedom hmm? and yet the bondage the limitation is there according to divine will which is, which is governing the law of evolution hmm? so man benefits maximally when he combines his free will with divine will hmm? now the question would remain how do you combine free will with divine will how do you know that your free will is not against divine will and how do you know that your free will is working according to divine will now the way to do that is to find an integration when the mind body and spirit functions in harmony then spontaneously every action we do hmm, becomes or is performed in harmony with divine will in other words it is not anti evolution hmm, but it is within the flow of evolution we are not blocking the flow of the water in the river we are allowing the water to flow to reach its destination into the ocean which means divinity the purpose of all evolution is to reach divinity as we know so when we try and live our lives with our free will hmm? and if we do not understand it by our own minds then there are teachers that would explain it if we cannot find teachers there are scriptures in the world hmm? there are certain ethical moral standards that are set out and all these standards that are set out in various theologies were set out for a purpose they were not purposeless so if we cannot choose or make up our own minds we go to a teacher or we go to our scriptures which shows us that by acting in a certain manner you are in tune with divine will when you are in tune with divine will then evolu the evolutionary process becomes faster and not only faster but much more smooth because that force is so powerful the evolutionary force is so powerful it has such a strong magnetic pull that all the little rough edges of the free will just melt away scraped away Hmm? and the smoothness comes hmm? the rough stone all the rough edges are cut away huh? because of the force now and then when we do not understand things in its proper perspective we might find the smooth the rough edges very jarring and that we call unhappiness because we don't understand it and we are viewing it from a very small perspective in this vast continuum hmm? that is beginless and endless and with our own small little minds we are viewing life or existence in a very narrow sphere and it is in that very narrowness that we find this great turbulence Hmm? but standing apart from it and seeing the vastness turbulence disappears for that turbulence that might be there does not apply to you anymore you are apart from it but only when we view things in its narrow perspective then you are forming a direct con- connection with that turbulence and the narrowness of your mind so you are forgetting the continuum 
the continuity of all existence. You are forgetting the universality. You are forgetting all existence and just now centering upon that little narrow perspective, that little narrow view. And the mind has a habit of exaggerating that little turbulence. Hmm? Good. We, when it comes to our personal selves, we always look at things through a microscope. Hmm? We do that. We do that. Hmm? Uh, a little insect looked at who is uh, ordinarily might seem so quietly moving along but through a microscope ooh, the, the, the movement it is making is, is shattering hmm? so that is what we do when it comes to us as we are traveling on this path hmm? pushed along pulled along in the framework of evolution to reach the ocean divine. <laughs> huh? yeah. When we throw the microscope away hmm? and just view things as we find them hmm? naturally without the aid of the mind which acts as the microscope and that wants to exaggerate things because our troubles are always big troubles <coughs> always big troubles but other people's troubles are nothing <laughs> yes we do that we do that yeah. so when we develop greater and greater integration within ourselves a greater harmony within ourselves through our spiritual practices when we gain a different perspective to life, hmm? throwing away all those gadgets, those microscopes, hmm? and, 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 and take life and accept life, to admit one's faults, to try and do something about it, to accept life as it is, for where we are, we are for a purpose. Even you coming here, to do to, to, to this cause of me coming here it's no accident it is meant hmm? it is meant to be so there's a purpose to it for anyone that just leaves here after the course with just one or two words hmm? that could be remembered perhaps could change the entire lifestyle oh yes couldn't change the entire lifestyle now, as we do our spiritual practices, as we gain a deeper and better perspective to what life is, as we understand what this turbulence is all about, as we start knowing that the storm is only in a teacup, hmm? then we would take life and accept life in its truest value in its truest perspective we realize that we are just viewing things through a very tiny people hmm? and through that little tiny people you cannot get the entire perspective so let us accept it according to our vision hmm? right. now when we have these factors in mind proper living and the conscious effort of altering our lifestyle Hmm? doing our spiritual practices which gives us the strength to alter our lifestyles it does not need to be drastically altered hmm? just a slight change here and there and even your own best friend will notice that you've changed something <coughs> within yourself that you've broadened your viewpoint hmm? Hmm? that your mind has become more receptive and more open rather than closed and pinched that your heart has now greater feeling of love and it is pouring out my cup runneth over hmm? now when all these things start happening then free will becomes divine will for free will is also part of divine will free will is actually the play of divine will Hmm? Free will is actually the expression of divine will. Huh? Hmm? 
that is why we have to go through all this. Like that poor seed that grows this lovely flower, it has to have that explosion in the ground before it can become a flower. Huh? But if we realize it to be an explosion that is necessary for the flower to bloom, hmm? as we go on this airplane, on this trip later, and view those treacherous alps, hmm? to be just little mill hills, huh? hmm? where are the problems? No problem. No problem at all. Hmm? So, Happiness is what we make it. That is the message. Happiness is what we make it. Two men were digging holes. Hmm? When one was asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm digging a hole. When the other was asked, what are you doing? He says, I'm digging to build a foundation for a cathedral. And yet both were digging holes. Look at the concept. Hmm? Let, let our perspective be vast that we are digging here to build the foundation for the cathedral. And of course the other one which all of you know, two men behind prison bars, one saw mud, the other saw stars. Huh? Both in the same circumstances. One could see gloom, the other sees glory. Perspective, perspective, perspective. And that is why I come on these trips to give these talks to you, these discourses. The main idea behind it is that so that we could change our perspective, our viewpoint in life. Hmm? And when we change our viewpoint, when we expand that awareness, gaining a little understanding, life changes. It changes so, so beautifully. You'd just be surprised. I know, I know, I've been through it all. Hmm? I've been through it all, I know. Hmm? Until I found that deep steadiness, that realization within me, and then I could stand amidst the storm and still be absolutely still. Huh? I like that poem of Rajat Kipling, If. Hmm? All of you have read that. If you haven't got a copy, it's, it's a lovely poem. Hmm? Yes. And that produces the steadiness. That produces the one-pointedness. When we have the one-pointedness, we concentrate all the energies. When we concentrate our energies, we can direct those energies. When we have the ability to direct those energies, we will always, because of natural law, direct it towards happiness and greater joy. And to direct it towards joy and bliss, we are directing it towards God. We take one step forward and the poor old man runs ten steps towards you. That's Guru Shakti. That's how it works. Simple. So divine will, free will merges with divine will. Until the mind is of narrow perspective, then you will only see free will. You've only heard of divine will. But when free will merges into divine will, then free will ceases and only divine will exists. And then you can truly say, Thy will be done. Huh? Thy will be done. Because now, your little will that you think it's so almighty, has merged away into that which is really almighty. Thy will be done. Not my will. This is a subject we can go on for a long time. Ten past twelve. Okay.